my face is right here focus on it hi guys i should preface this by saying that this is the second part of a two-part series so if you haven't seen the first part go watch that first i'll put it right here you can come back to this one afterwards otherwise the context of it probably won't make much sense although if you were stubborn like i am you could just watch this instead because you clicked on this for a reason so starting off where we left off i've just realized i've broken my spinal column by falling out of a tree and i've told my mom and they've brought me from the er to another er and they've done surgery on me the next nine days were kind of a blur for me i do remember here and there having friends come and visit although i've had people tell me that they came to visit me in the hospital and i was awake and i interacted with them and i have no recollection of them being there including some of my family members i do remember one person in particular coming to visit me and that was my ra from in college my resident advisor is what that stands for she was up in northern california i think visiting her boyfriend's family they had just started dating maybe a month before that so they came to see me in the hospital because they'd heard about all this stuff that had happened to me it was on facebook my mom was like telling people they were there for maybe two minutes and they came in and told me that i had to get my catheter taken out your catheter is the thing that helps you to pee and that was an intimate thing to be said right in front of my RA's boyfriend who I'd never met before. It was a little awkward, although I don't really remember it, but I do remember feeling like, I'm so sorry that you just had to hear that. <laughs> it's just a little personal, like your catheter being taken out, you know? That's really one of the only other things I remember. I do remember some of my friends also coming and bringing me like People magazines and reading out loud from them and just hanging out with me. I also remember, because this happened right before New Year's, watching the fireworks on the TV in my hospital bed, thinking, what have I done? I could be out partying right now, and instead I am in a hospital bed in the ER. <laughs> Another thing I remember, and I'm laughing because it's awkward to talk about on camera, is that you basically, you have to go poo before you can leave the hospital. They have to make sure like everything's working, and I could not do it and they were so frustrated with me I'm sure because I could have left the hospital like a day or two before and I couldn't because I could poop so they made me take this stuff called Metamucil which is literally just fiber and you put it in water and it's the most disgusting thing you will ever taste in your entire life it doesn't it tastes like dirt water i remember that being a really gnarly experience in the hospital in terms of physical recovery that was also something that was very challenging i was in a basically from my shoulders like up here right above my chest down to my hips back brace and i had to wear that at all times if i was up that basically supported my back because i didn't have any muscles anymore and i also hadn't walked in about nine days and so my body had to relearn how to walk with this injury and so they had to like pull me out of bed they had to like help me sit up they had to hold on to me as i walked down the hallway and the first time that i walked again after i broke my spine i literally could only walk like to the door of my room and then back and i was exhausted i slept for like five hours after that tiny little walk but i am such a stubborn like go-getter right after that i was like trying to like run down the hallways well not like actually run but like i wanted to go more than they they thought was good for me and i i just wanted to, to be recovered i wanted to be better i was very determined that's the word i was trying to think of to get this injury done and over with so before i went home my mom had to get all of these different hospital tools for our apartment so i got like it looked like a trash picker upper so i could pick things up from the floor because i couldn't wouldn't be able to like reach over i had this like hot it was like half of a tube that i would i put my sock around the tube and then i put it around my foot because i couldn't put my socks on because i couldn't lean over i had like all of these things that are normally 
probably for like geriatric patients, but I needed them as well. <laughs> for the shower, I had to have a shower stool so I would be able to sit down because I couldn't get my wound wet at all. So we'd have to put a plastic bag over that. And actually the first time that I showered after my accident was about two weeks later and I found a leaf in my hair. It went, it went with me through my first walk and through my surgery and everything. It was just right there about five days after i got out of the hospital i decided as the semester was starting up again that i was not going to miss any school and my surgeon cleared me for being able to kind of go back to school um three days i think after the semester started and i was like that's it i'm going back i had already registered for classes the semester before and i emailed all my professors and i was like guys i'm coming back i'm missing the first couple days but i will be there don't you worry please save my schoolwork for me i will catch up and i had the most wonderful friends at school that helped me get through this because honestly without them I would not have survived at all so first of all my friend Tyler who was the brother of the girl that I was with I was at his house when I broke my back we went to college together as well and he on his own dime flew back up to Northern California so he could drive my car and me back down to Southern California to help me go back to school one of the kindest things that anyone has ever done for me Ever. My roommate Marianne and my RA's roommate Melissa and for pretty much like everyone on my freshman year haul who would help me in the morning dress my wound and clean it and then help me like get out. My friend Kaylee who let me go to the other dorm so I could shower because our showers didn't have handicap stalls and theirs did. So I'd have to go and bring all my stuff to another dorm and they would have to let me shower on their hall. My friends Michael and Victoria and my friend, other friend Tyler and my friend Matt who helped me carry my bags to school. I had this sweater that had two pockets in it. And so I became known as two pockets and my friend Michael became known as two bags because he always had his and mine. And like there would be no no thought but to, to grab my bag when we were like leaving class or going to class. People would help me walk from class to class because I couldn't carry my bag. I cannot believe even just thinking back on it how incredibly blessed i was that i had those people in my life who were so kind to me and so wonderful to me and so helpful and so selfless that they would go out of their way to help me meanwhile i was still on all of this medication i was on oxycodone vicodin i was on so many drugs they told me later that i was like the loopiest person they'd ever met and i was basically crazy <laughs> for a little while i also had to go to physical therapy and occupational therapy after my accident so for the first little bit i went to the hospital that i was at so that was like maybe the first week and then i also went to occupational and physical therapy down in Los Angeles where I was going to school and something that really helped me going through that period of my life was that my physical therapist was one of the most attractive people I have literally ever met and he was also a wonderful kind person he would do planks with me because I hated doing them so much so he would get up on the other physical therapy table and do them with me even he was ripped and I was definitely not ripped so I'm sure it was a lot easier for him than it was for me but man it made it a lot easier going to physical therapy because I knew that he would be there and he was so freaking attractive yeah so I did that for like three months oh my gosh I'm like giggly thinking about it he's still honestly one of the most attractive men I've ever met in my entire life he was also super married I think I found that out by stalking him on Facebook. Oh my gosh, if he watches this, I'm going to die of embarrassment. I'm dead. So that kind of leads into how this continues to affect me in my everyday life. It's something that I'm gonna live with for the rest of my life. It's something that I have to manage. I have to manage the pain of it. I have to manage the muscles around it. I have to manage my own physical fitness so that way I am um, prepping for the rest of my life because this is not like a minor injury it's a really big deal and although i 
tend to brush it off as something that just kind of happened a while ago and I'm very used to the fact that this has happened to me. It's not something to take lightly. No, I do not set off the machines at the airport. So the way that I manage it is I do a lot of yoga and I do a lot of Pilates. Specifically, reformer Pilates is something that the doctor, my neurosurgeon, told me to do right after the accident and it's something that I've taken up in the last six to eight months and I am now in love with it. It's also given me a whole new perspective on the way that I view my body and the things that it can do and the fact that it could recover from such a traumatic experience, such a like jostle to the system. The fact that I can walk, the fact that I can move and I can go places and that I'm mobile. Like that is mind blowing to think that my body went through that and it was able to recover through all of that. I am so thankful to my body. I'm so thankful to God for giving me the ability to walk. I'm so thankful for my body and the miracle of my body that he designed that it could do all of this and that it could recover in such a miraculous way because honestly, I'm not supposed to be able to walk if I had made one wrong move during the time that I was moving around or if something had gone wrong in that surgery there's just so many different ways that my life could have been really altered forever and instead I'm able to walk and move and do stuff and that's given me a huge perspective on my life man I I am so thankful I want to just seize everything that I can do I want to just go do everything and so I think that I am a more positive person because of the experience that I went through and I'm so thankful that this had a happy ending and that I am able to do so much with my body and I think I've just said the same thing in 8 million different ways. It's <laughs> a really tangible way. It's also changed my life because on the day of my accident every year for the last four years now, my mom and I go back to the hospital where I went and we give the nurses, uh, the ER people, the doctors on the floor that I was on and then the OT and PT people, we bring them pastries and coffee on that anniversary just to thank them for all the work that they do, especially because it was around the holiday season and that's a time where there could be a lot of accidents and people don't necessarily wanna be at work, they wanna be with their families enjoying the holidays. And so we're really thankful for all the hard work that they did and there were definitely a couple of nurses that maybe didn't affect my life as much because I was on a lot of drugs, but they were very supportive to my mom. Um, and so we're very thankful for the support that they offered and the kindness that they showed throughout that whole experience. And so we go back every year and try to give back to them in the little way that we can. So that was the recovery and like everyday life part of this injury and this journey for me. Um, if you watched all the way to the end, thank you for watching and being interested in this big thing that happened in my life. I hope this helped you in some way or encouraged you in some way. If you have an injury yourself, please comment down below and let me know uh, like what's going on if you feel comfortable with that. I know that the thing that was most helpful for me was having support and being able to talk about it with people. Wow, I said that in a really weird way. So I'd love to chat with you about whatever injury you might have and uh, what that was like for you. If you wanna see more videos from me, you can hit the subscribe button and. Um, then I will see you very soon. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!